We are looking at an up day today. <laughs> this is going to be a good one. Oh, yeah, sure. Profit taking has already come in and it's trying to spoil the party. But the ADP numbers were perfect. Productivity revision was better than orig the original report and was way better than what Wall Street was predicting. And then there's a report that Tesla is building in Shanghai. We have a full plate today. Let's get to devouring it. So Tesla is retracing that $10 drop yesterday. It's now at $7 and climbing. That's a pretty good start to the day. This is Randy Kirk. Please hit like, please hit subscribe. Please hit uh, notify as you know what we got coming up today. We've got Jeff Lutz is going to join us tonight for the first time as co-host on Wednesday's Good News program. All right. Uh, you know, uh, you also need to buy some cyber trucks, the, the, the bottle openers, you know, those kind of cyber trucks. Uh, it's, it's time to get those orders in. Christmas orders, come on now. It's uh, only 20 days until, it's less than 20, 19 days until Christmas. And then, of course, uh, join Patreon. It'd be great if you help out the show by joining Patreon. All right, let's see here. We've got Umbiism. That's not, it's Umbisam. Umbisam. Yes. <laughs> he says, Tesla breaking news. Tesla plans to restart the third phase of its Shanghai plant project possibly focusing on the production of the $25,000 model that it will launch in the future, according to a report in local media outlet Late Post today. That's the name of the outlet, Late Post. Tesla has already recruited a head of research and development for the Shanghai Mega Factory and is hiring a head of sales, according to the report today. Tesla's Mega Factory in Shanghai will initially purchase batteries from CATL and may later prove moved to production of its own batteries, the report said, citing speculation from industry sources. All right, that's a fair, that's kind of a rumor. Uh, we'd love to hear it confirmed from Elon or from somebody at Tesla, or at least, you know, at least some confirmation from other places, but that's worth reporting. All right, so that is from the uh, uh, China Nev Post, C-N-E-V-P-O-S-T. Okay, if you didn't hear it yesterday, this is in, 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 in conjunction with this, let me repeat it. Elon Musk says that the Gen 3 vehicle, the $25,000 vehicle, the, the, the Model 2, all the different names for it, is well along in production planning and that it will initially be produced in Austin. And I take that to mean it will be produced in 2024. Um, maybe it'll be the fourth quarter, probably the fourth quarter. Yeah, I would say for sure the fourth quarter, 2024. Now, uh, turning to the Cybertruck, Gary Black always manages to be conservative. He's very bullish on Cybertruck right now, but check out his financial analysis on the Cybertruck compared to mine. He says, what is this worth? Assuming an average Cybertruck ASP, average selling price of $60,000, how in the world could he get the $60,000 average selling price? <laughs> the lowest cost one is 60000 and the middle cost one, the only one they're going to sell for the first year, is it really? I mean, the other, you will know, sell a few of the 100000 ones, but basically it's the $80,000 vehicle that's going to be sold the first year, and people are going to be adding on to that $80,000. That's going to be a starting point before they accessorize it and add other things. And then he says a 20% auto gross margin. Now, maybe that'll be the auto gross margin for 2024, but that's not going to be the auto gross margin for 2025. And then he says a 15% tax rate. We can go along with that. He puts in all the other information and he comes up to a dollar per share uh, is added future value stock price. I came up with $2 per share. So anyway, um, I think I'm right. I think he's wrong because of basically his average selling price is crazy. And I, I don't think they're going to sell these for 20% margin. I just I just don't see where he gets that. All right. Uh, co-author uh, Lars uh, Strandritter, uh, co-author of the Elon Musk mission, says this morning, invest in Tesla. It's, it's at Tesla Best is where you find it on, uh, on um, X. Um, just broke, Tesla just broke Toyota's 37-year-old standing record. He says, we Danes love Tesla. A record number of people love the Tesla Model Y so much that it's now officially the best-selling car model ever in a calendar year here in Denmark. In fact, almost one in 10 newly registered, car, registered cars in Denmark is a Tesla Model Y. 
amount of share of the uh, Denmark market is now a Model Y. All right. So, uh, but, and as long as we're talking about that, you know, there's a whole thing with the strike going on and, uh, and now it's moving to different countries. And I think that this, I, 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 I want to believe, I'm an optimist, so I'm going to believe that Elon is going to continuously figure out ways to get around this strike if they have to drive them into the countries one at a time. Um, now, here's that almost perfect report from ADP. Companies added just 103,000 workers for the month, slightly before the downwardly revised 106,000 in October and missing the 128,000 Dow Jones estimate. All right, so everything about that is good news for the market this morning. Uh, and the, the the thing that it's really not saying is there was an increase, okay? So yes, it's lower increases than the market was expecting. Yes, it's lower increases than we've been getting. Yes, it you might want more and more jobs to be coming into them. But guess what? There's fewer and fewer uh, folks that are available to go to work. <laughs> so you've got a real problem here. You don't have enough humans in the workplace and available for the workplace. Anyway, 103,000 is a good number. I'm happy with the number. Along with the modest job growth came a 5.6% increase in annual pay, which ADP said was the smallest gain since September of 2021. Now that 5% increase in annual pay is so much higher than anybody else is reporting. It's interesting because it's coming right off of actual, uh, you know, the actual amounts that they're seeing on pay stubs. But it's way higher than what people are saying. Job changers saw wage increases of 8.3. So people making a switch from one job to another saw uh, increases of 8.3 to make that change, making the premium for switching positions the lowest since ADP began tracking the data three years ago. So after leading job creation for most of the period during the COVID hit in 2020, leisure and hosp leisure, leisure, you know, and hospitality recorded a loss of 7,000 jobs for the month. Trade, transportation, and utilities saw an increase of 55,000 positions, while education and health services added 44,000, other services 15. So services-related industries continue to be the one that are getting the job gains for the month. Goods producers saw a net loss of 14,000 in 15,000 lower in manufacturing. So uh, that's even despite the settlement of the uh, of the auto industry union fight. Anyway, so we have lower increases in jobs, but they're still increasing. Now let's add some more outstanding news and my favorite subject, productivity. Non-farm business se sector labor productivity increased 5.2% in the third quarter of 2023. That's the revised number, much higher than the expected 4.9% from the economists that were polled and revised up from 4.7. So already the 4.7 was a huge increase from the negative number of the prior quarter. And now they're saying, no, it was even more. It's up 5.2. It says output increased 6.1%. Hours worked increased 0.9%. All quarterly percent changes this for these are seasonally adjusted. I like it when they throw that in. I like to know whether it is or isn't. The increase in labor productivity is the highest rate since the third quarter of 2020 when productivity increased 5.7%. From the same quarter a year ago, non-farm business sector labor productivity increased 2.4%. Unit labor costs in the non-farm business sector decreased 1.2% in the third quarter reflecting a 3.9% increase in hourly compensation and a 5.2% increase in productivity. Unit labor cost increased 1.6% over the last four quarters. That was such a big increase that it brought the last four quarters into a positive, uh, even though it had been negative all three of these other three quarters. From the Kobiesi letter this morning, bank lending is now down 1.5% over the last year marking the first year-over-year -year decline since 2011. Prior to Fed rate hikes beginning, bank lending was growing by 10% per year. So the banks are probably not very happy with this, although they're part of the problem. They're becoming so restrictive in their lending. And of course, the Fed is also part of that problem. But I believe this is another one in a long line of evidences about a change in wealth. Business owners, property owners, consumers are all older. 
They're all better positioned regarding even the need to borrow. We saw this in the small business survey where only 2% were concerned about borrowing. Smart investors will borrow when the rates make sense, but are able to pull back from that borrowing when they don't. Um, and right now, uh, the, the rates are not horrible. <laughs> Believe me, these are okay rates historically, but they're just higher than they have been recently. And older folks with much more wealth, business owners, small, medium-sized business owners, they've increased their wealth so much from their houses, from their homes, from their second homes, <laughs> from the from the stock market, et cetera, and probably from their businesses as well. Um, anyway, from MoneyWise, it says, uh, there's plenty of doom and gloom about the global economy right now, but BlackRock's CEO, Larry Fink, who I never, ever quote, and who I'm not a big fan of, but it's the biggest fund out there, seems to have spotted a silver lining in the midst of dark clouds. He says, I'm more optimistic than ever. He said that to Jim Cramer in a recent interview with $9 trillion in assets under management at one of the most popular index funds in his arsenal. BlackRock has a unique insight to the state economy. This is why optimism from the world's biggest asset manager is noteworthy. He says he's, he would, he's, I think he said that he's 100% in equities, in stocks. <laughs> there you go. There's a there's an interesting one for you to end my news reporting this morning. Now let's find out where the stocks are. Tesla is now up seven, well, six dollars and eighty-seven cents. The Nasdaq Nasdaq is up sixty-five. The Dow is up sixty-nine, and the S P is up fifteen dollars. Let's look at the percentages. Whoops, I hit that wrong. The percentages are. The Dow is up 0.2, the NASDAQ is up 0.45, and the S&P is up 0.34. So we have a normal, back to the normal NASDAQ doing much better than the Dow uh, situation this morning. And of course, Tesla completely outstripping the MAG-7. And actually, the MAG-7 is mixed this morning with Apple down a little, Google up a little, Amazon down a little, Meta up a little, <laughs> et cetera, et cetera, going down the line. But Tesla completely outstripping all of them. So if you will remember, I said it would take a few days for the market to digest what took place with the Cybertruck uh, handover and all the revelations that came out of that. We now have Tesla being called almost across the board years, 10 years ahead in technology. Uh, expanding their lead in technology. The Cybertruck has given everybody a reminder that this company is so far ahead of the automo auto the rest of the automobile industry in technology that it is the, the, the next pr place in line is way, way behind. Everybody keeps comparing it to BYD. BYD's technology isn't close to Tesla's tech, okay? Te they're not close to Tesla's prices. Yeah, they're close in terms of unit volume, but that unit volume includes uh, hybrids, um, and uh, you know, and, and good for BYD. I'm I'm happy for them. I'm glad they're doing well, but they aren't the same in any way, shape, or form as Tesla, nor in terms of the other th categories that Tesla's bringing to the table, like full self-driving, like robots, like Dojo, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's not even close. So that's where we got Tesla this morning up. 2.6%. We have got the Kathy Woods up pretty much across the board. And now let's take a look at bonds. We will start there with the bonds. And the bonds are down another two basis points this morning at 4.148. I don't know. I told you there is no technical reason for them not to go to 3.25. I'm repeating that not because I think it's going to go there quickly, but there's no technical reason for it not to. So 4.148, way under my 4.25, which I said I thought would be a stopping point, but there could be a trading range. We'll see what happens. Uh, we've got the uh, two month is uh, down almost one basis point. We got the two year up. <laughs> we continue to see the inversion. It's just, I mean, I, I have... But what this means is, is that these inter the bond market is not reflecting an opportunity to see consumer lending, short-term consumer lending go down yet. Um, and that's not good. We want to see the consumers 
getting part of this deal. Somebody said yesterday, the rich are going to get richer off of this inversion and the middle class and the lower middle class, those folks are not going to be getting the benefits of these of this uh, move into bonds. But the, apparently folks are really loving the 10 year, which I said four months ago, five months ago, I said, I, I actually said I was going to potentially buy bonds for the first time in my life. Okay, let's move on now to these other uh, the other categories here. Let's look at oil. Oil is down another dollar fifty six, going back into the sixties. It's seven. It's now seventy dollars and seventy six cents. I think it's going to go into the sixties because nobody believes OPEC uh, is going to really cut their their production at all. And there's just isn't as much need for oil right now. It so far, uh, you know, it's it's soft. I looked this morning, gasoline, regular gasoline prices continuing to drop. Um, so yeah, all right, gold this morning is up seven dollars and ninety cents at two thousand and forty four. That's back into the trading range it had been in before. That was that spike the other day was like a one or two day spike. It's not continuing. Uh, we've got copper up uh, just. 0.33% this morning, but still, you know, back in its normal, it's in the middle of its trading range. The dollar has firmed. Um, it, the, I would expect the dollar to continue down now as the as the uh, tenure continues to drop. We have got the Bitcoin up 400 more dollars this morning, sitting right at about 44,000 if you're interested in that. And then we, and a lot of people are, believe me. All right, so let's go. Uh, back and take one last quick, not one last, the next to the last look at how Tesla is doing this morning. See if it's continuing up. We have got Tesla at, whoops, at uh, $6.37. So getting a little choppy up there. Yesterday, you know, it was 10 points higher. So we're sitting at 245. As you know, I think we're going to be at 300 or maybe even beyond 300 by the end of the month in the Santa Claus rally, at least for Tesla. Uh, and then all-time high by the end of January. Uh, the all-time high one is the one I'm really uh, convinced of. The being over 300 at the end of the month is, is a, I'd say, a pretty high likelihood at this point. I don't see, I don't really see anything to get in the way of the market continuing on the rally, uh, and the market is going to bring Tesla along with it as Tesla continue continues to churn out good news day after day after day. So all very exciting. Um, all right, so. Um, this is a, a, a really serious issue I want to bring up to you. Jeff Lutz is going to be joining me tonight. Okay, and then Bradford Ferguson will be back next uh, on Thursday night. We've got these co-hosts now that bring so much more color to the evening program. I hope you're going to enjoy this. I still don't have anybody for Tuesday. If you have a recommendation of somebody for Tuesday, uh, please put it in the, in the comments below. By the way, you guys said that you'd like me to do more. Uh, maybe it's not everybody, but you're saying you'd like to hear more about the other companies from time to time. So I am trying to bring in, if I see headlines, I'm trying to bring in more stuff about X, about X.ai. Uh, from time to time, I'll, I'll certainly do Neuralink. Now, you know, uh, in the uh, group of folks that I bring on as as uh, helping on this channel, um, Brian Wong is a super ex expert at SpaceX, uh, as is, um, you know, a number of other of the folks. I'm not a super ex expert on SpaceX, uh, but boy, Brian certainly is. Um, and then uh, when it comes to Neuralink, uh, he's also uh, hugely expert in that category as well. So um, I, I'll, Brian Wong uh, is uh, attending a conference this week, but I'll try to get him for a couple of shows over the weekend talking about some of the other companies. Um, and uh, so there you go. I want to I, I want to be uh, in, uh, I want to serve you guys. This is what the channel is all about. And then if you'd like to help the channel, if you'd like to help yourself, if you'd like to make your friends, family, coworkers, uh, club members, wherever you're going to be exchanging presents this Christmas, if you want to make them happy, just like Sandy uh, Monroe made Elon happy yesterday, give them one of these amazing little Cybertruck bottle openers. They're so cute, so clever. It's a great magnet for the refrigerator. Five, $25 for one, $45 for two, $65 for three. All the information is below in the description to make it easy for you to place your order. And then if you join Patreon, you get one of these for free. Okay, let's wrap this up and get it posted so that you guys get to see it while it's still interesting. A uh, little choppiness now going on in the market. 
Uh, everything is choppy, choppy, choppy. Tesla is sitting at $5.29. As we say, see you in a while. It's been great talking to you.